so let's uh, continue to discussing uh, material selection from the viewpoint of uh, specific mechanical behavior. Uh, the two main properties that uh, we look for in design is either the stiffness of the component to resist deformation, for example, or the strength so that it doesn't uh, fail prematurely. So if we have a design and uh, we're looking on a blank sheet of paper and we want to select the best material ever for that particular design, we have to put criteria for material selection and then on top of the criteria for material selection we want also to input some constraints. So we discussed uh, during the last segment the selection criteria on the basis of stiffness and it turned out to be that uh, the key uh, material combination of parameters that can maximize the stiffness but at the same time minimize the weight is the ratio uh, of the density divided by the elastic modulus and that is for the case of axial loading. So we're going to call this combination of properties that is the ratio of uh, density over stiffness as a material performance metric. Metric something to measure with. So in general the metric that we have uh, is uh, we, we have the uh, performance metric uh, will depend on uh, functional uh, properties or functional requirements, uh, geometric parameters, and material properties. And uh, we focus on the material properties in this function F3, which is called the material efficiency coefficient. So for the case of uniaxial tension, we found that the material coefficient was obtained as uh, a process of maximization of E over rho. So we were able to look at with a power of 1. However, if we look at bending, for example, as a different type of loading, then we follow a similar procedure. So let's look in here. So if we have uh, bending, then we usually get the relationship between the deflection and the force. And in case we have a cantilever beam, length L, force F in here, then the deflection is F L cubed over 3 E I. And we know that the, if we treat this as a mechanical spring, then the spring rate is the force divided by the deflection and we can get the combination of uh, parameters that describe the effective spring rate as 3 EI over L cubed. If we have a round cross section, the uh, modulus of inertia, or second moment of inertia, is given as A squared over 4 pi, then we can replace I with this quantity and finally we get an expression for the cross-sectional area in terms of the stiffness K of the spring, the, the length and the elastic modulus. Again like we did for the case of uh, uniaxial tension, M is equal to, the mass is equal to the area times the length times the, the density, so the volume times the density. Substituting, we find that the property that needs to be minimized is rho divided by e to the one half. So you notice here that e to the one half for the case of bending. So if we go through this example, we find that we can separate the uh, expression for the mass into three functions where F1 is related to the stiffness and F2 related to the geometry 
uh, and F3 is the material property that need to be uh, minimized. So we max must now maximize the inverse, which is e to the one half divided by rho. So if we take a section of the uh, material selection uh, diagram, uh, we will find that we have to uh, plot different straight lines and uh, the straight lines should be parallel and uh, they have uh, the ratio of e to the one half over rho to be constant. So this ratio here is 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 1 and so on. So we're trying to find the, the best uh, combination material that, that for which this line uh, passes. So for e to the one half of rho equals 3, it will pass through wood, and it will pass through some composites and some ceramics. So now we can choose wood, we can choose composite, we can choose ceramic, and, and from within we can be much more specific as the design uh, progresses. However, we can put in also constraints. For example, if we put a constraint that the strength has to be above a certain value, for example, 50 GPA, the elastic modulus that is, that would limit the selection to this region. So it's either ceramics or composites, and then we can look within this balloon for specifically for the materials adding more constraints if necessary for the particular design. So that gives you an idea about another approach to material selection for which the um, stiffness is required in bending to be uh, maximum for a minimum amount of material minimum mass. Uh, as I mentioned, we either uh, design for minimum deflection or we design for maximum strength. So another way to classify the families of materials is a plot that was developed by Ashby. This is the Ashby plot similar to the previous one which we have the strength versus the density and uh, we uh, group the families into metals again ceramics uh, composites polymers and natural materials and foams so you degroup nicely within certain ranges of strength combination of strength and then density and again using analysis similar to what we did before, we would look for uh, maximization of powers of S over rho. So either, either S over rho for axial, so for axial loading, um, we maximize directly uh, S, so S, S to the power beta over rho is the function that we want to maximize. So beta is equal to one for axial, and beta is equal to two-thirds uh, for bending. And uh, uh, as you can see now that this is really the end uh, game of, of uh, selection of materials, and uh, you have now, it's like a palette that one is using to paint, as a designer is using this palette to paint, uh, and you have a very wide variety of families of materials and uh, once you bring in the design constraints in terms of the loading or the strength that you require, then you either maximize the um, stiffness uh, for a minimum weight or you maximize the strength for a minimum weight. And I think that covers pretty much what we needed to cover in uh,